While Brazil condemns that arrangement, she also insists it was legal, all of it. Cleta Mitchell has been around campaign and finance for a long time, and she's not so sure. She's an attorney and a campaign finance law expert, a Republican. Cleta Mitchell joins us tonight. So, uh, Cleta, campaign finance law is notoriously complex and confusing, even yes. to people who have to deal yes. with it for a living. Yes. <laughs> so I'm uncertain exactly as to how this would be illegal. You know this area well. Tell us why you think this may have violated the law. Well, let's start with the fact that the people on the Democratic side, the left, they want all these restrictions and limits on what people can, what parties can spend, what people can give, et cetera, et cetera. And the political parties are subject to strict limits on what they can give to their candidates and what they can spend in consultation or what we call coordination with their candidates. Right. And essentially, essentially what the Hillary Clinton campaign did in August of 2015 was it entered into a memorandum of understanding with the Democratic National Committee in which the Hillary for President campaign essentially took over control of the Democratic National Committee, entitling itself to all of the resources and the right. limits of the DNC. And those are supposed to be accounted for and allocated dollar for dollar to any candidate. But none of that happened. They did that as a contract, saying that Hillary Clinton's campaign was entitled to all of the research. They could control all the hiring. They would have access to all of the technology, the database, the voter, the voter database, et cetera, et cetera. Literally everything the Democratic National Committee was doing. They even moved the bank account of the DNC from Washington where it had been for decades. I went back and looked, and actually it was the same bank account when Donna Brazile was the chair back in around 2000. They moved the bank account to the same bank in New York where Hillary Clinton's bank account was, and the treasurer of the joint fundraising committee that was set up between the DNC and the Hillary campaign was someone who was an employee of the Hillary Clinton campaign. It was control of the DNC with its higher limits by the Hillary Clinton campaign. Have you ever seen anything like that before? I mean, is that, be honest, is that unusual in the middle of a presidential campaign? Look, it's not unusual for a presidential campaign to uh, have a lot of say in what the national party committees do after right. the nominee is chosen. That is not unusual. And that is actually customary. What's unusual about this is that it happened a year before Hillary Clinton was the nominee. Right. And I think poor old Bernie Sanders was, I mean, here is Hillary Clinton literally controlling every single operational aspect of the DNC starting in 2015, in August, September 2015. So he really didn't have a chance because they controlled right. the hiring of the communications director. They controlled everything. I have never seen that before. I've never seen anything like that. Before, Staff no. that we now know sought to undermine the Bernie campaign. So, but back to the campaign finance question, are, are, are you saying that because of this contractual relationship between the campaign and the DNC, the campaign was allowed to, or was, cap was able to exceed the caps on spending? Would, that's the violation? They, they exceeded the caps on spending, the coordinated expenditures. The, the parties are limited. Look, I don't believe in these limits. Let's be clear. Right. I think no, I got it, but it's the law. Part, yeah, but it's the law, and, it, uh, and, and it, McCain-Feingold in 2002 strengthened the prohibitions on coordinated uh, activity between candidates and their parties. And so there are limits, there are restrictions. None of those costs were assessed against the Hillary Clinton campaign, and she controlled all of the expenditures, literally. So, all so of the why wouldn't I mean? So, what does that mean? So, it, if what you're saying is right, and I know for a fact you know what you're talking about, what are the consequences for this? Well, let me just say this: any expenditure, um, any campaign finance violation involving twenty-five thousand dollars or more if the activity was knowing and willful, and this was actually a Chuck Schumer amendment to right. the campaign finance law, that is a criminal violation. And the Department of Justice has jurisdiction to investigate. Huh. So I think both the, F the FEC should investigate, and I think the Department of Justice should investigate. Or, and one of the things I think is important to note here 
is that all of these people who call for yep. all these restrictions they have no, they apparently have no intention of abiding by them. No, apparently not. And, so, and they're pretty open and pretty <laughs> open about it. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Cleta Mitchell, open. thank you. That was really interesting. Thank you.